Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Scott from King Vehicle Damage Repair and if you remember on the last video, I told you we are back. We are bringing you more content, more varied content and more regular content. So let's go. Following on from our last video where we paid Halfords a visit, not as Scott King from King Vehicle Damage Repair, but as an ordinary member of the public who is not trained or skilled in the body repair profession. We asked one of the kind members of staff if they could provide us with something to repair a small scratch or chip, and they did. They gave us this. Quoted by Halfords, all you need to repair a chip. And this is what we got. So what we're gonna to do today is we are going to do a real world test using Halfords touch up kit. And then what we're also going to do is follow the instructions as per Halford's recommendation, and then also use it the way that we believe it should be used so that you guys at home, if you need to touch up a small stone chip, you're gonna know exactly how to do it and get the best results possible because I've seen way too many people purchase one of these kits, either from Halford's or a main dealer parts department and make an absolute mess of it. So in this video, it's basically gonna be a how-to. So today we're gonna to use my van. Reason being is because this vehicle is on the road every single day, up and down the motorway. It is absolutely peppered on the bonnet with stone chips, like many of you, you viewers' vehicles at home. So what we'll do is we'll pick two substantial chips, one to the center of the bonnet, which we will use Halford's recommendation and then one to the left-hand side up by this washer jet where we will use Halford's recommendation with a slight adoption from a professional perspective as to what we think you should do. So you can get the two perspectives and then later on through the video, you'll be able to see the end result and you can make your decision as to what you think is best. Ultimately, allowing you to not call out the professionals until it's highly necessary and just get rid of those really, really annoying chips that aren't a real bugbear, but sometimes you just don't want to see them. And that's what the purpose of this video is, is literally just to take your eye off the chip. If it's anything more than say a ballpoint pen or a little bit bigger than that, then what I would always suggest is you bring in the professionals like us. For those of you that watched the video previous to this one where we went to Halfords, I must just note one thing. When I was speaking to the member of staff in Halfords, I kept ask, asking him, will it make it invisible? He said, you heard in his words, if we sand it back using 800, the area around the scratch, if I put this on with primer, then the base, then the clear, theoretically, it goes invisible. The reason I was asking him that question is because I wanted to get some kind of idea as to what results to expect post repair. Reason being, for those of you at home that may have never tried this thing before, you would really want to know what results you're gonna get. Is it gonna be invisible? Is it gonna be invisible from normal viewing distance? The guy at Halfords basically said, it will be an invisible repair. Obviously, I knew it wouldn't, but I just wanted to kind of get some idea of what I should expect from this product. But to be honest, it was a little bit misleading. So anyway, the kit is made up of three different products. You've got a primer here, you've got a base color, and you've got a clear coat over the top. Now, according to Halford's instructions, this process could take two to three days. They say, when you apply the primer, allow 24 hours for it to fully cure. Really? They also say, depending on how many coats you apply with your color, you may need to leave it a further 24 hours for it to fully harden before you apply the clear, clear coat. Come on, Halford. Okay, so in here we've got the primer. Now, what we'll do is we'll get a very, very small amount. When it comes to doing these touch-ups, less is more, guys, remember that. So you want minimal, minimal amounts of primer, and we'll put that into the chip. Whoa, now be very careful. You see it was just building up. It was literally just building up, and we're just about to drop over your bonnet. So take your time with this, and just literally 
dab a tiny, tiny, tiny amount into that area which is exposed and just build it up. Less is more, I can't say it enough. The last thing you wanna do is touch up over the area that you're trying to affect. Now already, I have a bristle from this touch up brush in the chip. It's not a very good start. So what I'm gonna have to do is try and pull that out, but I'm not going to because this is a real world test and I wouldn't imagine those of you with the greatest of, of respect that are novices, I wouldn't imagine you would start to pull the bristle of this brush out. So we'll continue. And this primer is really thick already. The surface area is raised. Now, when it comes to a toucher, I don't believe in primer in it first. Um, the reason being is if rust or oxidization has already set in, then it's set in. Just because you put primer over the top doesn't mean that it's gonna stop it. You know, if it started to oxidize or rust, it's there. It's only gonna get worse slower and slower or progressively over a period of time. So we'll continue moving forward. What we'll do is we'll use a heat gun to force dry that primer because we haven't got three days. So we'll spend maybe about 10 minutes just heating that up with a heat gun to allow that primer to go off and then what we'll do is we'll hit it with the base. I've actually got a heat gun here. What you could use at home, if you haven't got a heat gun, you could use a hairdryer. Um, I would just fan it over the area for about 10 minutes should be adequate if you were gonna follow the Halfords process. But take note, I've got a suspicion that the Halfords process isn't gonna be as good as our process, which may not involve a heat gun or hairdryer at this point. Now granted, when you touch in a darker colored vehicle, it's a lot less visible than say a light colored vehicle. An example of that is a silver. When you touch in a silver chip or scratch, it tends to go slightly darker. And the reason for that is, is the heavier you apply a touch up paint to a panel, the darker it will go. And what you've got to remember is, is when these vehicles are sprayed either by myself or by a robot at the factory, when the paint comes out of the gun or the robot, it atomizes. So it lays or lies on the panel slightly different to when you're touching it up. When you're touching it up with a touch up pen or a touch up brush, there's a lot more product going on to the panel at any one time, which means it will go darker. So what we may do in the future is we may do a silver touch in just to give you a comparison, because as I say, it is substantially more visible than say a black. That chip for now, we will heat gun and then we'll see where we'll end up with that. And then we'll put some clear coat over the top. And I guess we'll have a look at the results. So just to recap, when applying the base color, to the chip, Halfords recommend between 10 to 20 minutes between each coat if you have to put more than one. They also recommend 24 hours before you then put the clear coat over whatever color it is that you're touching up. We haven't got 24 hours, as I said at the start of the video. So what we have done is we have used a heat lamp for about a good 15 minutes before this product has actually dried. One thing I can tell you, if you are using a hair dryer at home, you're gonna be there for some time because this product does take a very long time to dry. It may actually be wise, if you are gonna use a Halfords product, to touch in the chip and leave it overnight and come back to it the following day. Otherwise, if you're doing this through the winter months, you might find yourself in a little bit of a mess if the underlayers aren't fully cured, okay? So just bear that one in mind. So now we're gonna go over with the clear coat. <laughs> this is where I've seen this go horribly wrong for so many of my clients. The amount of times that I've been out to a client and they've had a scratch, car's been keyed or something, they've gone to Halfords and they've spoke to one of the members of staff at a particular store and they've said, right, buy this kit, this is what you do, put your primer down, you put your color over the top and then you put your clear coat and then you see the runs down the side of the car. You can see it's everywhere but in the chip or the scratch and it's really not easy to use this stuff and you can see 
like look it literally just drips everywhere so this is where you really need to be careful because if you get this part wrong you basically undo everything that you've that you've achieved up until this point so again give it a good shake into the bottle get rid of any excess and you literally want you see these drips coming down you don't want those on there you want to take those off you don't want that dripping on your body work okay you guys thank me for this because <laughs> this is where you'll have to call in the professionals if you get this part wrong okay so we've got hardly any excess there's still a little bit there and we're going to take that off and then we're just going to literally just one tiny dot over the top we're going to take off the excess and we're just going to spread that slightly on there and that guys is literally all you need no more than that now that will need to cure for a full 24 hours unless you've got infrared lamps at home which i'm sure you haven't if you put an infrared lamp on it you'll probably find after about 20 minutes or so that will go hard um obviously don't do it on a wet day because if you get any water in there whilst whilst it's wet it's going to cause you some problems what i would recommend if you've got a heat gun or a hairdryer at home give it a fan for 10 minutes just to help it go off and then leave it forget about it till the following day okay now the appearance what you have here is going to be the exactly the same appearance as what you get 24 hours later once it's fully hardened and if you zoom in you'll see that this is substantially raised now i have followed this by the book in terms of halford's instructions and what you've got is yes the chip is somewhat less visible but it's raised I wouldn't be happy with it to be honest um, yes I am a perfectionist I do it for a living but do you know what if this was my £10,000 £50,000 £100,000 vehicle I wouldn't feel as though this has achieved the desired results it's certainly not invisible that's for sure if you want to see a video of how we professionally come out and do this kind of thing then click here or somewhere on the screen now to watch that video so what we do is we when we professionally do it and we come out and do it at your home or work we get the chip to this kind of level here and then what we do is we flat it back and we make it smooth i'm not going to give you that today because that's not real world you're not going to start sanding back clear coat on your bonnet and then machine polish it at, at home because i appreciate obviously you know it's not the sort of thing i would recommend anyone to do that hasn't got experience in the body repair trade so now what we're going to do is we're going to flip it up a little bit we're going to use these products but we're going to do it the way that i believe you should use these products not as per the halford's recommendation but as per the king vehicle damage repair recommendation so what you will need for this process is to make sure that the working area is clean and free of any dirt or grime and make sure it is dry you will need some masking tape which you can get from anywhere wicks halfords anywhere you know masking tape everywhere sells it you will only need the base color now this doesn't have to be a halfords product it can be from a paint supplier as i said i mentioned bodycraft can make you up the exact color of your car in a little touch-up pot so yeah color of your car and you can get some clear coat now you could buy an aerosol from bodycraft spray it into the lid and you'll have some clear coat there 1k clear coat to spray it into the lid and i'll talk you through that in more detail as we proceed through the process and that's it three products you will need for this touch-up process first and foremost your masking tape i don't use brushes because when i showed you at the start of this video the bristle actually ended up in the chip and i'm also going to show you another reason why i don't use a brush wait there so those of you that ever did art at school will remember an artist brush was always in some kind of paint thinner now unless you keep your brushes if you have any at home in thinner then what's going to happen is once you've used the brush once it's going to go hard it's going to dry out and it's just going to become a bit of a mess and if i had to use a brush for every single time that i touched in a chip i'd need a hell of a lot of brushes so i don't use them and i get better results using masking tape that is what we call a paint refinisher trick now the key is just to get the corner of your masking tape get a nice point on there a bit like a parker pen 
for my younger viewers, you may not know what a Parker pen is. A fountain pen, actually, not a Parker. Well, it was a Parker, a fountain pen. Do you remember the days, younger viewers, where you used to have to put ink cartridges in your pens? No, I bet you didn't know about them. Anyway, so yeah, you want your tip of your masking tape nice and pointy, just like so. And then what we'll do is we'll get our colour. Now, no, I'm not going to put primer into this chip. A lot of the time, if it's a new chip, it probably wouldn't have oxidised. You'll notice it will start to go, if it's an aluminium body, it will start to go slightly crusty white. If it's a steel body, it will start to go rusty orange. I don't believe in putting primer in there because all you're doing is building layers up and the purpose of this process is to trying to trying to build the paint up in level with the original paint that's on the car. As soon as you put primer on, you're gonna end up above the original layer of paint on whatever panel you're trying to touch in. Primer is very thick, so we don't want that. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna lose our brush for now, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our touch-up masking tape, we're gonna dip that into our pot like so and you'll notice that i've got no drips coming off of this yeah it's absorbed some of the touch-up paint already and then what we'll do is we're coming nice and direct and it's so much easier to use this than an actual brush and literally nice and gently in there voila so what we'll do is we'll heat gun that for a period of time 15 20 minutes something like that just to make sure that's dead dry and then we'll check back in in a moment If you zoom into this chip with just the base colour in, you'll see that it's not raised. The colour is sunk into where the chip is and this is the reason guys why I said to you scrap the primer because you don't want to try and fill up the chip too much otherwise by the time you come to stage two or three you're already too high for the original paint and you end up with what looks like a little bit of a lump. So again, clear coat, fresh masking tape roll. And if you're not using the Halford clear coat and you're using, I would recommend an aerosol, a 1K aerosol, spray an amount into the lid and just follow the process exactly as I am here. So again, extremely careful with this guys because you don't want it to drop or drip over the panel that you're working on. I would recommend putting a small piece of tape just to test it. So you can see I've got a nice amount, literally perfect amounts for what we're working on so again we'll repeat that we'll just test a little bit right there and then we'll go for it now we'll dry off our touch up stick and we'll just spread this ever so gently into the chip like so and there you have it that is how we believe you should touch in your stone chips So guys, that is the process completed. I have put infrared lamps on both chips for about 25 minutes and force dried the clear coat. Reason being is I've got to get going out to work. Um, it's tipping down with rain and I need these dry. But if you're doing this from home, as I said earlier, just make sure you give it a solid 24 hours to allow the clear coat to air dry. In terms of the two processes that I've shown you today, I I think it's fair to say that the King Vehicle Damage Repair way is the most effective for the best results. In summary, use masking tape when touching in, scrap your primer, don't use it, otherwise you'll end up with a touch-up that's too raised. And remember, less is more. Those of you that are avid viewers or avid followers will know that the vehicle we've worked on today never stops. Please do not go in on me too hard on the comments when you pick up maybe some swells on the bonnet, the amount of chips, light scratches there are. It is a working vehicle. The van does get worked very hard. I am due to change my van next year as I change every three years. So look out for that coming next summer. But between now and then, what we're going to do is film a video for you guys working in collaboration with King's Fleet Services 
up in the Midlands on how we refurbish the inside of the van. What we will cover is what you need to start up if you want to become a mobile repairer, the tooling and equipment that I have in my van, and most importantly, how it looked prior and then post refurbishment. So when we took a break from YouTube, the video that I put out around that time, we said to you guys that we're taking a step back to allow us to put more thought into the videos that we're going to bring you guys on the YouTube platform, take it to another level, being more informative, bring you some how-tos and some more varied content. And this is one of the first videos in the direction that we're headed. So I hope this has been useful to you. Just remember that if you're trying things out from home, if it is anything more than a small chip or a scratch, you might want to consider using the professionals. Also, if you haven't subscribed already, make sure you're subscribed. If you want to see what I'm up to on a daily basis, follow us on Instagram because we're always putting up updates on our stories and posting on a regular basis. And if you found this video useful or you've liked the video, make sure you hit the like button. Guys, I'm Scott from King's Vehicle Damage Repair. Thank you for watching and we will see you on the next one.